Yeah, so obviously there was a big uh, offsides call in the Chiefs game. Um, yeah. Kelsey lateraled it to Tony, and it all got called back. Mm-hmm. And um, yep. Mahomes went in his presser to then blame the refs and kind of just said that they shouldn't yep. call stuff and to let the game be played. Um, yeah. The receivers have obviously been a problem for the Chiefs all year. Is this officially yep. out of hand? Is this something that they can come back from? Okay, so the, a lot here. One is people are like, you know, Mahomes needs to be holding his receivers accountable. I don't know what he's doing in practice or in the meetings. I would assume he is holding, uh, attempting to hold them accountable there. I don't think it would be good for him to air out his receivers on the sideline or in the press conference. Now, you can disagree with me on that. I'm telling you, I prefer you not to do that publicly. I don't think that is what good leaders do, is publicly air out their teammates who everyone knows are struggling. Again, some people would say that is what they need. Now, a lot of people believe Eric Biennemi was the bad cop guy for the Chiefs offense. He's gone, and now you don't have anyone holding these guys accountable. It is very hard for me to believe that Kelsey, in particular, is not getting after these guys behind closed doors. But that's not really the story. The story is the call... And Mahomes' reaction to the call. So, the reason our friends from Little Rock brought in this sign that says 25,172 snaps is because that's how many offensive snaps Andy Reid has coached, and that plays that penalty's never been called. So, folks are like, oh, so you don't want them to call it. What Andy was saying after the game, when he's like, you usually get a warning on that, is... If a guy is lined up at the ball or in front of the ball, typically the referee will tell the coach or the player, hey, tell him or it's going to be a flag. And the reason I know that is not only because Andy Reid explained it, but also the pure math of, do we think Andy's gone his entire career? Patrick's gone his entire career and no one's ever lined up in front of the ball? Of course not. It happens. They get warnings and they move back. You can say that's a ridiculous system. I don't necessarily disagree with you, but if that's the system, that's the system. I would almost compare it to the way delay of game is called in the league. We all watch the NFL every week. We see the play clock go to zero. We see there being another beat, then the ball is snapped, and that is not a delay of game. By the letter of the law, maybe it should be. The referees have decided that's not how we're going to call it. So whatever our rules of engagement established are, we should play with those throughout the course of a football game. Credit, by the way, then, and this is where the real frustration comes in, for many of us, to Dan Orlovsky for breaking down the tape. Kadarius Toney was lined up in that exact alignment five times in that football game prior to the play with a minute left. So the frustration is, if it, first of all, if you don't want to give any warnings and you just want to flag it, then flag it. And if that were flagged in the first quarter and he just keeps doing it, obviously that's on him. And this is on Kadarius Tony. But if I am lined up in the same spot the entire game, and the ref never says anything to me and never flags me, I am going to understandably think I'm fine. And last night, in credit to Dane and Hughes for pointing this out, last night, Jalen Waddell lined up in the exact place Kadarius Toney was. It's not flagged. There is a reason that in the 2021 season, offensive offsides was called once the entire season. In the 2022 season, offensive offsides was called twice in the entire season. Now, after the game, the NBC's ref was like, ah, it's a point of emphasis this year. It's been called 11 times. Nonsense. Because I dug into the data. Going into last night's game, of or the Sunday's game, it had been called 11 times. Nine of those we're on offensive linemen on tush push plays. So it's not a point of emphasis. It's happening more this year because there's this new bastardized quarterback sneak that guys are trying to do like the Eagles. They can't do like the Eagles, and they have the guard in front of the center. 
And that is a different spot than what we're talking about here. Because in that spot, you would get a real advantage from offensive offsides because you're fighting for a few inches. So that is the context of Mahomes losing his mind. Now Mahomes went on Carrington Harrison, my former intern, and now the afternoon host at 16 in Kansas City's radio show and apologized for losing his mind. That's fine. I don't think he need to. I needed to. I'm old enough to remember Tom Brady on Monday Night Football not getting a flag. He threw a Hail Mary. They threw a flag on a Hail Mary and then picked it up. And Brady chased the referees into the tunnel, berating them. Yelled at the refs, running into the tunnel, berating them. I think you're allowed to lose your cool every once in a while. And here's the Wilds on TV yesterday said the Chiefs' d defense is like someone who got caught robbing a store and all of their defense is everything other than saying, I didn't rob the store. Like, ah, it was no big deal I robbed the store. Nobody cares that I robbed the store. And that is not how I look at it. Because everyone's like, oh, he clearly admitted he did it. I'm going to use a different legal analogy. I am, I, I drive on this street Every because the con let me get, add a little more context here. The other context of Mahomes losing his mind is last week, and you guys heard uh, on this show. I couldn't do the show. I apologize because heard me on the TV show. I did not blame the refs. Mahomes did not blame the refs. Nobody blamed the refs with the Chiefs after the blatant pass interference penalty that we all saw was uncalled. Right. So if you're Patrick Mahomes, to use the legal analogy, here's what happened. A week ago, your car got stolen right in front of a cop. He saw it. It's like, ah, nothing I can do about that. Sorry. And in fact, you lost your job because of it, because you couldn't get to work anymore. A week later, you're driving down this street in your new car going 36 and a 35. You see the cop, he doesn't do anything. You see the cop the next day, he doesn't do anything. See the cop the next day, doesn't do anything. It's now your fifth day on the job, the new job you needed because your car got stolen, you lost your previous job, and this cop didn't do anything about it. Driving 36 and a 35, and you're on your way to your most important meeting of the year, and he pulls you over. You're like, what did I do? It's like, well, you were speeding, 36 and a 35. You're like, excuse me? He's like, I show you the radar detector. Are you going to argue you weren't speeding? It's like, no, man, but I've done this all week and you haven't stopped me. It's like the rules are the rules. We're here to enforce the law. Aren't you the guy that saw my car stolen a week ago and no, and you didn't do anything? Eh, you see let's the not worry about that. Though. You might lose your temper. There's a, there's a you might lose your temper. That has a number on there. Yep. Correct. You are well, right. Well, and that is, and that's the argument is well then don't speed. That's fine. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.